Welcome to the soap. Welcome everyone to a very special episode of The Soap. Uh, this episode we are doing a Christmas special. So this episode, hopefully you're listening to it on Christmas Day or close to it. Uh, we have all the members of the podcast on this episode, which is a world first for us at least. Um, <laughs> we are just going to talk crap pretty much and um, yeah, hope you have a fun time. For this part of the podcast, I have the A team, uh, not known for their skill, but rather for the first letter of their names. So I have Aaron. Hello. Hey, guys. It's nice to be back. I have Arthur. Hello. And I have Andrew or Cav, whichever you want to. <laughs> yeah, whichever one works, man. I'm all good. Yep. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Normally, Cav, but today it kind of disqualifies him from the A team. I'm it? Andrew for the way, yeah, for the day. <laughs> uh, we choose what we want to on this podcast. We don't have to use logic here. Uh, all right. Well, we're talking Christmas, so this is going to be about, I guess, what we're doing, um, all our kind of traditions, that kind of fun stuff. Or Kwanzaa. Start. Yes. Yes. Uh, whatever you Correct. celebrate, whatever you believe in, uh, we hope everyone is enjoying something, no matter what it is. But Aaron, <laughs> let's let's t start with you. Uh, what are you doing for Christmas? Actually, I'm um, heading off halfway across the country. It's about 13,000... Oh, 13,000. Wow. No, 1,300 kilometers away to a little place in South Australia called uh, Drossen. Um, it's, uh, we're going over to see the my better half's family this year. They live in a little coastal village down on the Great Australian Bight in South Australia. Um, Bryn's mum's not overly well, so ev all family is coming out this year, so hopefully we'll make a really, really good Christmas for her. Um, and just a little fun fact, it's also the place where all the salt in Australia is made. The salt, Saxa Salt Factory is there, so um, fun fact. So we're going to go over there for a couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to go fishing, and we're going to drink some beer, and we're going to have a great time. It's always good to get away. What about you, Arthur? Yes. What are you doing for Christmas? Uh, fucking off to the Central Coast for the family thing. And then probably just coming back. And that's about it. Very exciting. And also looking forward to the government shutdown for two weeks. That's really important. <laughs> I mean, aren't they always just kind of shut down? Ooh. <laughs> Shots I, fired. I resent this heavily. <laughs> <laughs> not, not not the base workers. I was more talking the politicians. Like they don't really do much for a day to day thing. Well, clearly Scomo doesn't. If he's in actually in Hawaii, as the rumors are true. But uh, mm. the others yeah, maybe depends. Uh, normally, I won't say anything about politics or anything like that. But yeah, that is a little bit disappointing. Um, is it a big family thing for you up there? Is it? Do you go spend it with a lot of family or just a few members? Uh, it's, yeah, it's basically everyone now. So then we've expanded it this year. So there's like way more people, which kind of sucks for me because that means I have to blow my money on presents. It just means everyone will get <laughs> shittier presents. But that's you need fine. to like get a present where you can like just hand it to the group and they all just take like a piece of the present. <laughs> I always thought it'd be really cool, like, to get everyone together in, like, a big ring, you know, like a boxing ring, and just throw, like, a thousand bucks in and a winner takes. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, well, you get to you a point when there's too many people, it becomes impractical for everyone to actually give a present to everyone else. So, in that yeah. case, you just do, like, secret Santa presents. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Or, or you just call yourself the present and go, right, bitches, I'm your present. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> That's it. That's all you get. I don't my, want to unwrap you, My mate. sparkling, sparkling conversation while I slowly get drunk. I'm just so imagining Aaron in, like, get. the Britney Spears, like, glitter suit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I actually went and bought two new Hawaiian shirts the other day. I'm quite excited to crack those bad boys out. Because now being 40, um, I feel that it's time for me to become a real dad. Oh. I like it. I yep. like it. Yep. So Hawaiian shirts and horrible board shorts away and a, and a straw hat. <laughs> Better than the mankini, at least. Yeah. We'll let everyone just picture that for a moment, and then we'll move on to Cav. 
Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, Cav, what are you up to for Christmas? Oh, nothing big this year. Um, the missus is working uh, in the afternoon, so we'll probably have a... Uh, presents for the kids in the morning. I call them the kids, but really they're a bit old now, so uh, they still love Christmas, which is good. Uh, Ethan is, what, 18 this year? Emily is 20? No. Uh, oh, yeah, man. No way. Yeah. Really? Way. <laughs> Bloody hell. Tell me about it. 18, Dude, we Ethan. We got old. I know. So he still loves Christmas, so he's ex- excited for the presents. So we do. Yeah. We, we crack open the presents in the morning on um, uh, on Christmas Day, and then um, off to lunch with the in-laws. They uh, live in uh, Port Stevens, so we'll be heading over there for lunch, uh, which should be good. And then uh, pass the afternoon, pass the fuck out. I think full of food <laughs> and booze. So it should be wherever good you go. Hopefully it's not on fire. Yes, this is also true. <laughs> mm. It's been terrible the last two weeks or so. So uh, it's uh, calmed down a bit out here. I know you guys are having it a little bit bad up there in the Blue Mountains. Yeah, we had yeah. Um, someone have to go home today because they their house was literally within a kilometer of the fire. My. Um, so they raced all the way back there to do it. I believe, um, hopefully it's still the same case when this comes out, but I believe everything was fine. I believe they got the fire out just in time before it actually hit the houses. But it just shows you how close like that is getting. So for everyone out there, we hope you're having a safe Christmas and that um, the fires haven't impacted you too much. Um, speaking of uh, kind of traditions and what people do with their families, like do you guys have traditions? Arthur, do you have a, a specific thing that you've done each year or...? No, nah, I mean, not really. I mean, it's just kind of, everyone just kind of does whatever. And we do the family thing. The tradition is don't, no one talks to each other in, on Christmas morning until everyone's had at least one coffee, if that counts as a tradition. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like my house every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just shut the fuck up and wait and get to the presents and let the adults have their coffee. <laughs> Is it an early affair for you? Because I know you're norm- normally a, a late riser. Well, yeah, because we, I have nephews that are like 10 and, I mean, 11 and 7. So they, they want to get up at like 6 a.m. and shit. We, we try yeah. and like push it to later and later. And I'm sure over <laughs> time they'll get older and like won't want to wake up that early. But yeah. at least for the time being. And there'll be like, there'll be more children this time. So that's just going to incentivize everyone to get up <laughs> earlier. <laughs> that is what like paradise for you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, on Christmas Day, it doesn't matter. Because what ends up happening, of course, is that you end up having that, and then you eat, and then you get tired, and then you eat again, and then yep. you nap, and then you eat yep. again. So really, it's just just a constant like cycle of eating and sleeping anyway. So it's... It's not exactly a very productive day, and that's fine. That's, it's that's definitely good. never a productive day, which is pretty good for most most parts. I mean, the food, well, for ours, the, the food is usually great. Uh, the, the drinking, of course, you've got plenty of beer, which is always good. Uh, then by the end of the day, you're, you're right. You've had a couple of naps, and then you eat again. Well, I'm going to try and force everyone to play more board games this year because <laughs> there's more people, so maybe people would be less... So like the, the slightly more bored people may want to do something apart from just like nap, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Do you have any Christmas themed or of that nature board games or is it just random stuff that you just want people to play? Nah, I, like, do you, do you really want to push more Christmas themed shit in people? Like, it seems like a bad <laughs> idea. Nah, nah, that's the time to not do the Christmas themed stuff. I'm not going to bring out like bit. Christmas themed Monopoly. I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm not that horrible. You normally get, like, people on either end of the extreme, I find. Like, there's the people that are just like, I don't want carols, I don't want tinsel, just go away. And then you've got the people who are like, I'm going to wear tinsel every day to work, I'm going to play carols on loop 24-7. Whenever something gets brought up, I'm going to make a Christmas version of that thing, like board games, video games, movies, like, everything has to be Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Like, I normally yeah, find... Yeah. Those people are rare. terrible and should be sent to the re-education camps immediately. I, mean, it's... I was going to say exactly the same thing. Um, <laughs> those people really need to, yeah, I don't know, lobotomized, I think is the term. 
<laughs> I mean, okay, maybe not the gulag, but like just just like a year in a re-education camp, you'll be fine. <laughs> No, one year in a locked room with Mariah Carey's Christmas album. That's enough to fix anyone. Oh, <laughs> I think that's actually now cruel and unusual punishment. They're not allowed to do that anymore. They use it at Guantanamo Bay or something. I mean, oh, they're terrorists. Every day, every day yeah. work. Wouldn't surprise me if they use it at Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> yeah. Poor yeah. buggers. It is a weapon of mass destruction. Oh, yeah. They'll confess to anything. What about you, Aaron? Aaron, do you Me? have any traditions? Or I have. We have very few. We've had a couple that we sort of created ourselves. Me and my wife and my son, which is basically lollies for breakfast. I was talking to you about this before, but yeah, um, just like a big bag of Allen's, you know, party mix or something, and just get up, get out of bed whenever. It's not an early thing, not anymore, since my son's all grown up and moved out of home as well now. Um, but yeah, we get up. Lollies for breakfast. I then might make some bacon and eggs after about nine coffees, um, and then <laughs> and then punch. We have um, we have our Christmas punch, which my partner makes every year, which is always spec fucking tacular. Um, you could probably run your lawnmower on it. Is it the same um, punch every year, or do you shake it up? Oh, every you, year? yeah, we give it a bit of a shake. You know, filter out the the bigger chunks and and go again. But no, we usually make like you know the big stew pots, like the big stock pots. Um, we generally make it one of those, um, and then just drink that until New Year's. <laughs> uh, other than that, we don't. Oh, I was going to say, you're my New Year's party, or one of my parties, I think I still had leftover punch. Maybe. Oh, I remember your New Year's parties. Say? Yeah, yeah. That was the Christmas punch. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have many other traditions. We just we just try and chill out and hang with family since I don't have a great deal of family left. So every other year we kind of do my family and then the other year we do my partner's family. So um, it's really good. We get along ev- well with everyone. We don't play board games. One of the newer traditions we have was um, watching the Doctor Who Christmas episode every Boxing Day, though. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, always sort of um, got to sit down and watch that as well. So And then fall asleep. <laughs> but no nah, Christmas is just a time to relax and, and just hang out with people and be drunk <laughs> that's a way to but do in it. the happy drunk way yeah so oh, it's cool we just make our own traditions what about you Cav have you started any tradi- traditions yourself or well f- for me um, <clears throat> when when we were in Africa we used to have a much bigger family so we would actually have the extended family come together and then we just all like, have all. We were young back then, so we were the kids getting all the presents and stuff, which was cool. Uh, but then, since moving out of Africa, we moved to New Zealand. Of course, uh, we had just an immediate family there, so all we did was um, just you know give each other presents and just spend the day yapping onto each other, which was cool. And then, since moving to Australia with. Uh, uh, the you know my own family with uh, wife and kids and her family being the only people we have around us because the rest of the family is scattered all over the world uh generally speaking not much of a tradition what we do in the mornings is the kids wake up they get their presents we go to the in-laws for lunch and have a lot of food a lot of drinking a lot of napping and that's about it uh during the night usually when we come home uh one of the things we love to watch uh, the kids absolutely love to watch uh is uh their favorite movie christmas movie uh, the polar express which we watch just about every year and that's about it so not jingle all the way <laughs> definitely not <laughs> oh turbo man <laughs> My dad loves that fucking movie. Every year he thinks it's going to be on like TV and like for Christmas. I'm like, you realize most people think this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not it's like really Last considered. Action Hero. I thought that was really good, but everyone else thought it was pants. Which one? Which one? Last Action Hero. Another I love that movie. Go. Oh, yeah, yeah but it's because everyone... it's got weird... It's I guess it's technically a power... It's not really... Uh kind of a anyway, parody yeah. I, I love it as well but i also love hudson hawk which is also considered that's, another movie I love. that's a bruce willis movie isn't it yeah yeah. Hudson hawk. yeah that's a good movie yeah. i love that one 
Yeah. It's surreal as fuck, and it's like bizarre. It yes. does a lot of things that you would not think a movie of that type would do, especially with like Bruce Willis as a main yeah. star. But the Amiga game was really bad. Just yes. It, out there. it was a 2D yes, platformer, it and it sucked balls. Um, <laughs> for me, I, I tried to start a tradition of getting everyone to watch Grumpy Cat's Worst Christmas Ever every year. Um, it lasted two years. I was about to ask how that worked out for you. <laughs> uh, not well. Um, I love it. I think it's one of the worst movies ever made. Um, and we did lose Grumpy Cat this year as well. So that's really sad. So we oh. probably will watch it this year. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you had lost your cat. No, no. Grumpy Cat. Like. Oh, the gr- oh, Grumpy Cat, the actual famous. The meme cat. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The famous yeah, one. Yeah. And, like and. And sadly, we actually did lose one of our cats as well. But that's that's neither a Christmas story. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but um, no, Grumpy Cat, Tard, Tard our sauce. She yes, died. Yes, I, rem- oh, I didn't yeah. know that. I, I, yeah, I did not so, keep up I'll, with it. I didn't know that. I will be I will be um, watching that moving and pouring one out for my dead homie this year. <laughs> I'm used to the uh, terrible and copious amounts of Tim Allen Christmas movies. Uh. Uh, like, am I the only one who's used to like every year seeing them on TV or somewhere? You know, no. I have Netflix and... now. <laughs> I've never sat down to watch one, but I do actually see them pop up every now and then, every Christmas time. They do pop think... up, but I've never s- taken the time to watch them. Let's be real here. We're mentioning Bruce Willis, Die Hard. That's... Yeah. That's the Christmas movie. That is a Christmas movie. I That's agree. The only I was going to ask. <laughs> it's the only one that counts. Question. Christmas movie or not? <laughs> Die Hard. But I think we all know the answer to that. Uh, we know the answer to this one. We all know it is a Christmas movie, but I would actually argue that Gremlins is a greater Christmas movie than Die Hard. <sighs> oh, Gremlins is great too. Um, yeah, it's I love Gremlins. Is it really better is... than Die Hard though? That, this is well, what I'm saying. I'm going that far. See, I don't think it's Christmas till um, Hans Gruber falls off Nakatomi Tower, though, really, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, spoilers, everybody, sorry. <laughs> Rosebud, and, like, he was dead at the end. R- <laughs> okay. Rosebud was the sled, I forgot to mention that part. <laughs> <laughs> You've ruined it for everybody. <laughs> Another fucking Bruce Willis thing. Well, not Rosebud, but, you know, he was dead at the end part. Yes. I'd- uh, yes, don't ruin that one. Nobody, nobody has seen that movie. So, <laughs> what about you, Dan? Uh, I kind of bounce around, so I don't really have the family side of things for it. So it normally depends on like who I'm in a relationship with or whatever. So, um, you know, so I normally uh, jump onto other people's traditions, which is why it's always fun for me to find out what everyone's uh, traditions and plans and all that kind of thing is, because. It's just, it's always nice to see, you know, what all these different people are, are doing and hopefully soon, like, I'll be building my own family and starting, you know, my own traditions where I can force them to watch Gremlins every year. Uh, but until then, <laughs> I just kind of bounce around and try and convince people, you know, try and get their traditions to be Gremlins. The way you said that, it's like, I'll make my own family with Blackjack. Hook it. Hook it. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a Christmas I can get behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blackjack and hookers. That's a proper Christmas. Um, that's right. Yeah. It's, Maybe uh, one year we'll just get all all the podcast members and there we go. That's our Christmas sorted. <laughs> we'll we'll go to Vegas or what's the Australian equivalent of Vegas? Like Dubbo or something. Star, <laughs> Star, Dubbo. Star whatever. Dubbo. Um, there is not anyone's version of anything. <laughs> Star City, yeah, we should do a podcast night. That'd be awesome. We'll go and we'll go and hit the sluts. <laughs> That'll be brilliant. Can you say sluts like, or slots? <laughs> I said it. I, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I Thank tried you to say it. with a level of ambivalence, I'm not comfortable. With. <laughs> I tried to say well, it. goes in both, right? <laughs> I tried to say it like Tony Tony Soprano. You know, we go and hit the sluts, eh? But yeah, it didn't work. So forget I said anything. <laughs> What kind of fucking Irish sounding Tony Sopranos? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Look, it's, a, it's my microphone. I've got it set to Irish. Hang on, I'll turn the dial down. Speaking yeah. of which, did, did I hear they were making a prequel series of the yes. Sopranos? Apparently so. I yeah, mean, James I Gandolfini's it's... dead. That's going to be a bit... No, no, no it's, it's going to be young. Prequel, so young ones. Yeah. Be young. Oh. Mm. And it's going to be his dad, apparently. 
Um, so that'd be a nice Christmas present. Um, do they ever work though? Like I know Sons of Anarchy has been trying to do that kind of thing as well. Like, do these prequels really ever work? Game of Thrones oh, wants the, to do it, of course. Yes. The Breaking Bad movie went well, apparently. Oh, not that I've seen it, but it got pretty good reviews on all yeah, of I saw the it. Um, Reddit. Oh, it's a movie. I, on. I think you meant like the yeah. television Yeah, show. it's on Netflix. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I just I haven't seen much that does like a prequel because obviously they're trying to piggyback off something else's success, but you like it for those characters and then you're going back and putting all new actors into this scenario, even if they've got the same name. Yes. This is not the same as what yeah. you just watched. Well, there's the, there's the Mandalorian. That kind of worked. Well, yeah, Mandalorian. Is the prequel, really? Yeah. Which, the three prequels prequel. were shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> and it has Baby Yoda. Come on. That's the, that's the new internet Wait, thing how, now, when, isn't it? Everything it is. Baby when is that movie Yoda. set? Like hey. hundreds of years ago? What, the... Which one? Mandalorian. Oh, so that's set between episode six and episode seven. Is it? Of Star Wars, yes. No, I thought it was between three and four. No. How can it have Baby Yoda then? No, I'm it's sure not it's... Yoda. It's a. It's yeah, after. No, it's after. It's, it's after the. Uh, it's after oh, the. Oh, okay. Uh, after pa- Palpatine supposedly died, so I don't know about oh, right. Episode nine, so I don't know whether Palpatine is dead or not. So I haven't watched it yet. Well, no one knows. Oh, okay. So the Baby Yoda part presumably is like a flashback to like ages. No, no, no. It's, no. It's, it's, this is after the, the Yoda has died. It's, the actual it's a Yoda, different Yoda. Died. We don't oh, know what race he is. Same race, but different. Same yeah. race, yeah. but it's different. Yes, yeah, a different character. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Because yeah. I thought I had this. Because okay, uh, you know, obviously I don't give a shit about Star Wars, but because my thing with Mandalorians is always from the um, Knights of the Old Republic games, which. Ah, if it yes, was set in that time period, I thought that's actually pretty interesting. Mm. To have, yeah, no, it's like, not, unfortunately. Okay, that sucks. Because that would make more sense, because the Mandalorians are a lot more relevant in the Knights of the Old Republic games as, like, a race of people. Because there's a whole, like... Yes. Oh, well, yeah, so I assume they read, like they probably don't count that because it's part of an expanded universe, blah, blah, but it mm. would have been interesting to set it in that time period. Wow. I reckon, yeah, Knights of the Old Republic would have been the best thing to, like, um, monetize and make a film out of. Well, it was yeah. by far the best Star Wars game. Yeah, I think I think this is where Star Wars went wrong, trying to uh, change the entire canon and making their own set of oh. I don't, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I think they should have incorporated a lot of the older uh, things into canon and then... You know, it would have been a better narrative, but instead of saying, okay, that's all out of the way, we're studying our own stuff. And I think it's a too hard basket. Like, there's so much out there. There really is yeah, a lot Yeah, that's true, out there. I guess. That's true. It's not even that it's too hard, it's that it's kind of wacky, and they're ultimately trying to recapture the same audience that the prequels have. Hence, hence, you know, the fact that they function. Like, the new ones are kind of basically the old ones, right? In terms of yeah. the theme and yeah, the feel yes, of the correct. films. Very much yeah, so. If, if only they had, you know, um, books and source and all of this stuff with an extended universe that they could have drew on rather than just remaking the first one. That was never going to happen, though. Like that whole, I know. What's the, what's the saga that came after? The Yuuzhan Vong. Yeah. yeah no, that was, was a fucking sick story. And that had Jada, Jada Marie and, like, cool Jedis and stuff, and instead yes. we got fucking... We got and Porgs. And that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why people, uh, I suppose the diehard Star Wars fans are hating on the new series. Mm. All I want for Christmas is a decent fucking Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if the rumours are to be understood... I mean, it's owned by Disney. Yes, if the rumours are to be believed, this one is not going to end well. So, uh, we shall see. Well, how much worse could it end? Okay, spoilers ahead. They killed fucking Luke Skywalker at the end of the last one. <laughs> How much worse can it get, Kev? You tell me, please. This is sir. true. This is true. I agree. I think by the time this podcast comes out, we'll have those answers. So it's going to be interesting. Probably not worth preempting what we think, considering everyone listening no. will be like, "Yeah, you're idiots." That's not what happened. Yes. Um, for All right. But I will say the Mandalorian is is what Star Wars is been looking for, and they do it really well. And they really do focus on the the Mandalorians and 
um, they really portray that culture and what's left of them like in a really good way. So I, I'm actually really happy so far. I'm mm. now an episode behind with Mandalorian, but um, yeah, it is for for people who haven't been watching Star Wars for a while. Um, it's really, really good, and it's it's not something that I'm particularly big into. I'm not a Star Wars person, but I do enjoy the Mandalorian. Is it just like standard proud warrior race guys, or do they do they do something that's actually interesting? No, it's Boba Fett. Mm. Yeah, it's it's more just um, like they're not a race of people. Like they're not allowed to take their helmets off or anything like that. So they're less taking a, away from the individual. You're just following essentially a nameless person um, uh-huh. through this journey, which is quite interesting because it allows you to put a lot of yourself into it and. You can just enjoy the storyline for the storyline rather than the character um, for it. It's the interactions between the Mandalorian and the other things other that people around who him. he is. Yeah. Um, or the lack of who he is that makes it so interesting. <laughs> I'm just it imagine- is actually quite good. I'm just imagining at the end he'll just take his helmet off and it's like meatloaf with tits. <laughs> his name is Robert Paulson. <laughs> wow. Oh, where did genius. that come from? I like it, but where did that come from? Mandalorian's just been ruined for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fat, sweaty old man. I will rein this back in. Um, any last Christmas things? Any traditions, funny stories of the past or that? Anything you've got to throw in there? Not really. Christmas is just... I I think a little bit Christmas is a very family thing. So um, I don't do a lot of dumb shit at Christmas, like Boxing Day or Christmas Eve, yeah. Uh, but Christmas has always been about family for me, so I don't have many fa- funny stories about the time I got drunk and fell asleep and stuff like that, but um, not really, no, not for me. What about a gift? Has there been a gift that stood out? Um, uh, maybe... Mm, not really? No, I've given some really cool gifts, but I've never really gotten anything cool because I normally just buy that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> What's the coolest gift you've ever given someone? Um, I got my dad a flight in a plane. He got to fly it around for a while. And I got my friend who used to work on radio um, just after Michael Jackson died, a sealed, still in plastic with the price tag sticker on it, copy of Michael Jackson's history on vinyl. Nice. So that was, um, that was my favorite gift giving thingy. But other than that, not really just... Well, I'm just saying I have uh, not flown a plane before, so if you need to give another gift of that to someone, <laughs> uh, I, I can't think, I can't remember ever giving anything interesting to anybody. But uh, one thing I can th- remember for myself anyway was uh, probably three, four years ago, uh, my mother-in-law, because uh, uh, we were giving each other presents and whatever. And then the, this this big box comes out. I'm thinking, oh, okay, probably something silly or whatever. But uh, she got me because uh, I'm a big star, uh, Transformers collector. So she gave me uh, a Devastator, which was the best gift anybody has ever given me. So <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. I uh, couldn't believe it. I was looking at it. It was like 300 bucks. And then uh, I'll probably save up money for that one one day. And then hmm. there it was for Christmas. Best present ever. Hey, really quickly. Sorry, I just want to ask Cav a question really quickly. Did you pre-order Unicron, by the way, Cav? I was going to pre-order it, but I heard that it was uh, they had stopped making it. Mm. Are they still making it? I think you can still get it through EB Games, but now they're bringing out Fortress Maximus in the bigger size, so I'm probably going to go with him. Yeah, I've got Fortress... Yeah. No, no, you, oh, don't yeah. have a, you don't have a four-foot-high Fortress Maximus. No, I do not. <laughs> He's about to. <laughs> <laughs> Give me two yeah. minutes. I'll, sell, I'll send you some info after the podcast. Please do. That'll be good. Awesome. All right. And we'll finish up with Arthur. Arthur, have you ever given or received an amazing present or had a great experience? Uh, Christmas for like me because like, I'm Russian. So the tradition for us is generally New Year's for the good presents. Um, so we generally on purposely kind of give bad presents because that's kind of the <laughs> idea. It's almost like... I try and stick to my dad's theory of presents, which is something that you would never buy yourself and something that's inherently kind of useless. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. 
It's an interesting theory. But still kind of okay. Like, not terrible, outright terrible, but just... The whole idea is that, yeah, something that you'll never buy yourself and something that's kind of useless, but that way you're not likely going to double up on anything. But for us especially, like, we generally buy kind of pretty much shitty stuff. Not actually shitty, but, like, let's face it, you don't actually need any of that stuff. We're trying to make it a little bit less crappy now, though. Throw us an example of past years, because obviously if uh, your family listens to it before you give it, it spoils it. Something in the past that's been a crappy present that you've given someone. Uh, I, I can tell you I've received a bunch of... There's, there's always the traditional Nan presents that are just like stuff from her house. <laughs> it's like, it's just picked up a bunch of old stuff from her house and wrapped it up and there you go. Um, and stuff that we've given. Oh, I don't know. I mean, one of my favorites actually was we gave our nephew a cassette tape. He's like, the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And it was full of cash. It was like full Whoa, of dollar bills. Oh, nice. But it was like, because he, he didn't, I don't think he's ever seen a cassette tape. Yeah. Up until he was like, what the fuck is this? How did you get cash in it? You just like a couple of notes in Well, there, no, or? the cash was in the cassette tape, like plastic holder. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. But the, the cassette tape was in there as well. So nice. I was trying to work out how you actually got it into the cassette itself. No, that would be fucking that. clever as hell. But then you'd have to presumably <laughs> open it and then, like, it'd be kind of defeat the purpose. I guess <laughs> this was a medium of, like, entertainment a long time ago. It's kind of like a floppy disk. So good. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the first part of this podcast. Um, I hope you guys have a great Christmas. We're going to transition over to part two for it, so our second group. But, um, yeah, thanks for being on, guys. No problem, man. Thank you all. Merry Christmas, bitches. <laughs> Happy holidays. Oh, we can't take Christmas yet, apparently. Happy Kwanzaa and uh, Happy Hanukkah. All right, now, moving on to part two, we've got the rest of the crew. So we have... Delphine. Hello. Mike. Ho, ho, ho. And Brendan. What's going on, my dudes? Let's start with Delphine. What are you doing for Christmas? This year for Christmas, I'm going home to France. So I'll be spending time with my family, my parents, my sister, and my other sister is coming from Canada with her kids and her husband. So technically, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day... They will not be uh, with us in Paris just yet. So we'll have a small Christmas. And then by the time they reach us, we'll have a, the real big Christmas. Uh, for me, Christmas is really family and food. Do you do anything special over there? Or is there anything different in France uh, compared to Australia that uh, you could mention? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's fairly traditional uh, to what we do. I think the main difference for me is the temperatures. Uh, for me, any time that I'm in Australia at Christmas, I never feel like it is really Christmas. Because for me, Christmas is cold. <laughs> we eat, you know, warm foods and so on. So um, that's probably the only difference is the type of foods and temperatures. Uh, but other than that, most people are going to be catching up with family. What uh, temperatures do you get down to? Obviously, in Australia, we can be anywhere from 30s to 40s uh, Celsius. What what do you get over in France? Uh, usually, that time of year where I live, it's going to be between 0 and 10 degrees throughout the day. Uh, it's very rare for us to have snow around Paris for Christmas, but uh, it has happened a few times. Perfect. Uh, what about you, Mike? What are you doing for Christmas? Well, it'll be a change of pace this year from our... Regular Christmas Day, we'll be having a Christmas Eve dinner, per se, and uh, we'll have the family over. Um, all the children will be gathered round the tree to open presents and rah, rah, rah. We'll have dinner. It'll be nice. Do you scare all the children? or No, I'm a delight to children all around me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to add in there as well. Uh, if you go up to Shooter's Hill, which is a bit south of Oberon, I was there, and uh, Christmas had snow, actually. Christmas Day, it snowed for about an hour, and it was cold. 
because we were on the mountain fucking ranges and it was like, ah, we've got snow, everyone. We ring everybody and we're like, oh, it's got snow, it's got snow, it's got snow. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, how long is it? Is it, is it fallen? Has it stayed on this? And you're like, nah, it just disappeared. So, cause we is are. it because you break everything? So on Christmas Day, no. you decided to break the temperature? No, I think so. <laughs> it was like on the cusp of the mountain ranges and we got like, it was just freezing cold all the time, which was nice because. I like the cold. Prefer the instead of the heat. I like the cold. I mean, you are known for breaking things. You did break a whole train network just by touching a train. Yeah, that once. was you, okay? Don't don't blame <laughs> me. Okay? That was you. But that was you. I was like, let's go for a walk, and you're like, nah, it's still the train. And the train stopped because the lightning smashed the box. Ah. Remember that day? I remember. He that says day. says lightning, but it was him. He touched the train, and then it broke. Mike is the lightning. That's right. Kapow! Kaching! <laughs> So, Mike, normally, traditionally, family-oriented for Christmas? Yes. Uh, Christmas Day is usually, well, you know, when I was a young child, um, we have racing down to the tree, six o'clock, you'd only be able to open one present and then you have to wait for everyone else. Uh, Like a Spanish tradition is uh, Christmas Eve, at midnight, you open one present and we all kind of have supper and then you go back to bed. So this year we're going to go with kind of the Spanish tradition and open a few presents and then be like, well, let's go to bed now. Sleep in, play a bit of video games and, you know, just chill. So it was a lot. uh, Last, it was a couple of years ago when I was back in Bathurst, I had a Christmas day all by myself because the family had got sick with gastro and they're like, um, we're not going to have Christmas because we're all sick. And I was like... So what the fuck am I going to do? And yeah, so then I ended up having my own Christmas in my own place. And, um, uh, you know, like in the middle of Bathurst, you know, Christmas Day. I mean, if you guys ever go there during the middle of Christmas Day, it's, I could have run around stuck it's naked. It's dead. It's I dead. Know. I could have run I've around done. naked. No one would have known except the video people who are watching the, you know, traffic lights. And they'd be like, holy <laughs> fuck, that guy's naked. So... <laughs> Like, you know. I, w- I wonder if that was the same year that I did Christmas by myself in Bathurst oh, as well. Uh, that would have you? been well, we could have three run naked together. years ago, maybe. We could have oh, scared Jesus. the priests yeah. and the churches. You know how there's churches everywhere? <laughs> just like, lulu, lulu. So anyway, anyway um, so there I am, and I'm outside on the veranda just enjoying the peace and quiet. And there's two dogs who kind of run past on the road. And I was like, that's, yeah, oh, you know, two dogs. There must be some owners come by. And no one came by, and the dogs kind of kept going back and forth. And then I was like, well, maybe they probably just jumped the fence and stuff. So I, you know, whistled into the thingy, into the microphone. And, uh, yeah, they came up, and they just chilled with me for the Christmas Day. It was nice. <laughs> they didn't, didn't shit anywhere, which was good. So, very and, well uh, trained. Yeah, very well trained. And then I took them to the pound and stuff and let put notices up on the Facebooks and shit and said, you know, anyone's lost a dog, and then... Uh, eventually, I think a day afterwards, or something. Another person goes, "Oh my god, my dog jumped out of the fence." So yeah, that was an interesting <laughs> story from the me. You mentioned uh, your parents are from different backgrounds. Yeah. Did that influence your Christmases, or was there any noticeable differences? Um, or? Yeah, like, well, I mean, you know, you know, my dad—he doesn't really give a fuck. Um, Mum has a tradition where she has the. Peruvian uh, nativity scene. So we have, as you know, as usual, <laughs> the white people nativity scene where they're all white kind of porcelain and, you know, stiff upper lip and um, very prim and proper looking. They're very much, you know, the American Jesus kind of thing. And on her <laughs> side, which, you know, she's got from her mum, I think, and her mum got it from her mum. And it's very clay, very earth tones, um, you know, really kind of, crappy looking um but it's it's uh, like a incan kind of christian nativity scene so it's very much down to earth there's uh, browns and stuff like that and it's very very colorful uh and she likes to put um what does she put now she's put she's put the white people up um and she put the brown people uh somewhere else so we have um we kind of <laughs> swap them around and stuff like that she has a tradition where you have a nativity scene and there's, you know, there's Joseph, there's Mary, there's the three wise men and the shepherds and shit. And you'll have baby Jesus. But she does a thing where she'll hide baby Jesus until midnight on Christmas Eve. 
Yeah, of course, he's not born like, yet. Yeah, well, you say, so, you know, some people don't really give a fuck. So some people go, yeah, no, she's not born yet. So, you know, <laughs> poor Joseph and Mary just are just waiting fucking for a month to go, oh, there's a kid. So, Has anyone ever just tried to find baby Jesus just randomly in the, in the house just to screw with your mother? Just to no, annoy that's, her? That's an idea. That's an idea. Yeah. Don't give him ideas. Yeah. Don't. It'll be like, um, you know, Elf on the Shelf and stuff. Exactly. What's but- baby Jesus getting up to now? A line of coke? All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that it. was already a that was already a PC enough version of the story. I think uh, you could have I Elf on the Shelf to... kidnapping Baby Jesus <laughs> and get like a Liam Nielsen doll. Like I have a specific set of skills. Yes, do that. I have seen on Facebook a few people that have replaced Baby Jesus by Yoda. Oh yeah. Oh, um, yes. And a few things where they over time replace more and more pieces of the nativity scene until. You know, when is mom going to notice? And I thought that was quite clever. Yes, that's an idea. Build it out of Lego. Yes, yes. <laughs> For anyone listening, don't follow Mike's suggestions. Yeah, straight follow my suggestions, people. <gasps> Listen to me. <laughs> I'm paid to lead. I'm going to move it away from Mike before he destroys people's minds. Brendan, what about you? What are you doing for Christmas? Uh, So for Christmas this year, it's actually my second year away from actually living with mum and dad. Um, So this is the first time I'm actually renting and living by myself. So it's a bit of a different feeling. uh, But this this year, so we're going up to Bridges. So um, up to the racetrack for Christmas lunch. Um, We're going to go up there with my grandparents. Traditionally, I normally would go see my mother and father if I could, but unfortunately, I don't have a license to actually be able to legally drive. I would drive, but I'm not legally allowed to, so we're going to have that. <laughs> you could um, start walking now, you know. You could start yeah, yeah, now. I could start walking the day before. Um, but, yeah, no, I don't, not a lot, really. Just, I think, it's Christmas Day, I've spent lunchtime with my grandparents, um, and then I'll go home to myself uh, and uh, drink some alcohol. <laughs> Don't know how much I'm going to have, but I know I'm going to want some. Fiddle with your hand? Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> something like that, maybe. Um, and then, you know, it's, uh, Boxing Day, I'll probably do a, a live stream um, of Star Wars uh, just to sort of give like a sort of a random thing for Boxing Day, just something for me to do. And for people that are not quite doing anything, that, you know, they can come in and tune in and, you know, listen to... Uh, me talk about Christmas or, you know, talk to me about how Christmas was, what you got for presents. Uh, it's just a little bit of fun for me. Yeah, you've had some good success streaming in the past. You did the Kingdom Hearts streams, which are actually quite uh, entertaining in that. So <laughs> I think that would be a good idea to seeing the Star Wars. I've played a little bit of it, thanks to Delphine. Um, it's quite an interesting game. It's very Star Wars. Though. You really feel the Star Wars to it. So that'd be exciting to see you do that streaming. Um, speaking of Boxing Day, Delphine, have you tried to bring Boxing Day over to France? <laughs> no, that's still not a thing. <laughs> just give them some boxing gloves. Like your duty, you've got to bring it you over just there. just go, gotta... who wants to play a little bit of uh, punchy punchy? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we do have uh, some sales and so on, but uh, yeah, Boxing Day is not really a thing there. Maybe you could like pre-record some cricket, the um, Sydney to Hobart race, and you know, yeah, get all, a barbecue going, a couple of beers, <laughs> sausages, snacks. All things that I think French people would not be super barbie. excited about. You could have snails Christmas on the barbie. <laughs> Wear some thongs, board shorts, singlet. Snail, you know, snails on the barbie. Wearing. Throw another snail on the barbie, love. I don't think anyone has ever done that, Mike. Well, French people could start it, okay. When I was younger, I actually thought that Boxing Day was actually a day where people would get boxing gloves and actually go into a <laughs> ring and play boxing. I was 10. I thought that was what it was. You just go in hey, for a ring of boxing. You know, I wasn't 10 and I had ten. never heard of Boxing Day until yeah, I arrived in Australia. And suddenly it was like, yeah, it's Boxing Day. And I had no idea what Boxing Day was. So obviously I also thought, well, it's got to do with boxing. <laughs> should have uh, the prime ministers box it out or well, you know get another because it's not it's not just australia that does it right it's anyone in the commonwealth yeah, that will have yeah. boxing correct day. yeah was well, it the queens and they used to fight each other the princes i believe where it actually came from is that um it was a day off for your servants um because people had so many servants back in the day uh where they would receive a christmas box from their master or that I uh, don't know how true that is or not, but... Um, Nobby got a sock. You know, yes. 
essentially <laughs> because the servants would probably have to serve, you know, their masters on Christmas Day. They wouldn't get their own day. So Boxing Day was the day after where they were allowed to go do their own thing and go see their families and, you know, something like that. So that's where I believe it's meant to be, but Christ knows what's actually real. Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus. <laughs> Baby Jesus. Um, what else, guys? Anyone got a specific little tradition or that? Like, you, what about movies? Like, do anyone watch specific oh, movies the Grinch. for Christmas? The Grinch, actually. <laughs> the Grinch. You watch it every year? Yeah, The Grinch with Jim Carrey. Uh, it's always, I think every year we've tried to watch The Grinch because he's just so damn hilarious. I actually haven't seen this new cartoonish one or whatever it's supposed to be with. I heard it was terrible. Uh, uh, well, then, never mind. Um, that's better to come about, you know, if you really, really want to. Is it? You know, I thought I yeah. had the Neil, the guy, the, guy, the, the guy from nah, um, The Grinch. Oh, is your mother. Worse, Benedict Cumberbottom or whatever his name come is. My batch. No, you come do. You said it well the first time. Come in your patch. <laughs> Isn't it a cucumber bumper dash or something come, like that? Come in your snatch. <laughs> Comedy bumbly bum, bumbly boo boo. <laughs> Bend a dick, come in your patch. Come in your snatch. Come in your snatch. Bend a dick. Uh, in a, I'll, I'll interrupt there just, uh, you know, to get back on topic. Um, in France, we have very much the same Christmas movies that you have in Australia or, or that people will watch in the US. Um, but we may call them differently. So, for example, Home Alone we have in a French version as well, just dubbed in French, but the name of the movie is different. It's called Mom, I Missed the Plane. So what the you, fuck? Yeah, you, you know, in France, we always rename the movies for some reason. Uh, but I think what's really interesting as well is that we have different kinds of movies that will play around, you know, Christmas Eve and throughout the holidays. So a lot of cartoons as well. Um, so things like... Wait, 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 wait. What about Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Is it like uh, Home Alone? Uh, <laughs> is it, is no, it the opposite? Yeah. Because you can't go, Mum, I miss the plane, but it's really Home Alone. Honey, no, I Shrunk no, the no, Kids. No, no, no. No, it's called exactly the same. Uh, Mum, they're on the plane, I <laughs> well, um, But, yeah, thing. so around this time we'll also watch things like Asterix so there are a few uh, different uh, anime from Asterix that we'll be watching so that's very traditional that you know families will be watching that and so on but what about, what about Madeline Joe, Madeline hmm? isn't Madeline spent French Mad the little girl thing with the uh, fucking orphan and shit and she's Madeline Madeline yeah, yeah uh, Madeline. Mad Madeline Madeline no, I don't even Madeline. know that Madeline, no. <laughs> it's like Madeline in the English version I suppose yeah, Madeline, the French do say anyway yeah French I don't even people. know what that is so gosh wow so she had your culture. with the twelve but, little girls or whatever they were all dressed in but you guys watch like Christmas movies and so on I have to say that you know recently like the last few years Netflix has brought us some amazing Christmas oh, yeah. movies all the Hallmark Christmas movies these romantic Ugh. really rubbishly Yucky. amazing Christmas yeah. movies there is a movie called <laughs> There's a movie on Netflix called Klaus, which is actually the play on yes. the Claus. And I've actually been interested in seeing it. Come out like a month or so ago from it. And I'm not quite sure. I um, have not watched it. I've been told this, it's really good. Um, the movie that in the movies now is called Black Christmas or something like that. And uh, apparently it's this murdering person and they're trying to kill. Yeah, it's a horror, horror movie. Yeah, okay, well, I don't know. Slasher, if I can think. <laughs> My daughter of Rose has. Not a real Christmas uh, she movie. watched. That's um, not something to show your daughter, no, 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 mate. No, don't. She's watching the don't. Santa Chronicles or whatever it's called, the Christmas Chronicles with. Um, yeah, the Christmas Chronicles. Kurt Russell. It's pretty good, actually. Kurt yeah. Russell. Kirk Russell. Kurt Russell. Yeah. I'll definitely be watching Die Hard. Oh, yeah. Don't yes, a real Christmas movie. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker! And I'm pretty sure The Office did a fair few Christmas specials as well, so I'll be watching those. Is this American um, or British? Uh, don't know. Probably both. Just so I'm not going to be hated by everyone. Right. The American one's better. We hate you, Brennan. We hate you. Yeah, I'm more the gremlin side. Oh, I've yeah, always been. I don't oh, know. Maybe it's just because yeah, most people don't one. do it. But I know everyone's like Die Hard is the ultimate Christmas movie or whatever. And there's the big cult following, you know, to make it that way. But for me, I'm a I'm gremlins. Gremlins, eh? Baby Yoda on ice. I don't know. He's the original Baby Yoda. He's way cuter. Mm. What's his name? Gizmo. 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 Gizmo, oh, the- Gizmo the Mogwai. He's so cute. 
What was the thing? If you you splash water with them, they, they turn multiply. to the bad. They multiply. You, yeah, you can't get them you wet. You can't, can't feed them after midnight. After midnight. midnight. Yeah. And they hate bright light. They hate bright light. Bright light. Bright yeah, light. They Red light or bright light. Bright light. Bright light. So what happens if you got Gizmo under a light? Would he just turn psycho or just go? Nee! They hate Pieces it. Pins. No, they just hate it. Okay, interesting. Torture him. Yeah, okay. Cool. Have you never watched Scrabblings? It's been a long, 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 long time. Okay, okay. Well, so. They're looking at rebooting it because yeah. uh, there's two original yeah, movies, can. but they are looking at doing a reboot. I mean, I'm open to it if it's going to bring Gremlins back into the limelight yeah, and that because it used to be so big and now it's following. What, and sell more know, back pop, into the pop heads or whatever they're called? Pip heads, pop heads? The pop, pop vinyls. Pop vinyls, yeah. They did bring them out ages ago, but they were like yeah, they probably did. early, early when they early introduction of pop vinyls when it wasn't that big, and they were like sixteen dollars ago, and now they're like twenty dollars ago. Or if you want to get exclusive ones that are ten inch ones, like Baby Yoda for six. Uh, I'm only getting the normal size Baby Yoda. I want a bit a baby big ten inch Baby Yoda so I can <laughs> literally sit it on my bedside table and just like pat it every night before I go to bed. No, I'm just getting the normal one, but the the Hasbro ones look really really cool. What about the ad? You know the I want a baby little baby doll shit to be like I want a baby Yoda. Yeah, that's poop what and I play want. Yoda. Yeah. Yoda's <laughs> change his diaper. Do you guys have Only a Christmas present that you got as a kid, like a toy or something that you, to this day you still remember opening and just being the most happy kid in the world? Yes. Tell us. I will. Uh, excuse you. you know, <laughs> buy me a drink. Um, uh, <laughs> Jesus, <so>. mate. <laughs> don't do drugs, you kids. You don't do drugs. Don't. Anyway, so unless they help one, you in medication, many many years ago, I don't know, remember which year, but it some years ago when I was young, had um, it actually we went on holiday t- on a Christmas thing. We went up uh, towards the coast, Mile Lakes, I think it was, and we had a Christmas by the lake, and we the, my parents brought presents and stuff, and I got a cool robot, like uh, think of like a tank and a robot body. Um, and he had like missiles on his arms, and uh, it was just really fucking cool. And you could just roll it around the grass and stuff, and it go on anything. And it was I played with that like for like a whole fucking month, two three months nonstop. <laughs> it was sweet. It was awesome. You know, you have a little rubber bullets like the precursor to Nerf, and it was just like and um, and I don't know what happened to it. Um, uh, yeah, I think I broke it, and I. Uh, you know, as you kids do, you play and play and play until it breaks, and then you're like, ah. so yeah, <laughs> it was pretty cool. Another one, another one actually. Sorry if I'm to interrupt. Everybody, was a guitar that was you know the button guitars. And you can pray the buttons in the, the you oh know, yeah, guitar hero. and it was like no no not like a, no, fuck it, before guitar, guitar hero. <laughs> well, you kids these days. This was an actual like a toy guitar that had buttons, and you would play like new 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 new. And you could do like little cool combos on it, and be like, and it sounds exactly like Guitar Hero. It's not Guitar Hero. Um, and yeah, I think I actually found it the other uh, a couple of years ago in the attic, and I was like, awesome! But then it had completely deteriorated away, and so you couldn't use it at all. And I was like, no. <laughs> and and the box I remember was like Toy of the Year. And you're like, yuck! Yeah, it was Toy of the Year, and that was cool. Nice. What about you, Brendan? Uh, for me, it wasn't one specific. It was... Uh, Guitar oh, Hero. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, no. So, uh, I was always big into Lego when I was a kid. Um, Lego. Woo. And so, it wasn't one specific toy that mainly got me. It was more that for Christmas, I got a huge What, what was the theme? Of, what was, was the theme? Police. It was oh, like yeah, a police yeah. City. Set. City? And yes. City, yeah. It was City Get it right. Police. Get it right. You shut up. up. Shut up. You punk. And you punk. it's my story. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember getting it from Santa and it was like the whole set. Like I got every single thing and I swear I spent two to three days with my mum <laughs> at, the, at the dining table. I literally had my Lego all over the place. Me and mum would be setting, trying to do every single Lego we got. And mum would be like, all right, one at a time, like one packet at a time. <laughs> and I go, no, 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 let's do it all at once. So I rip every packet open, pour it out. Now that I'm now that Noob. I'm 22, I realise that I never should have done that because it took me hours to find one piece. 
But it was fun because me and mum would always do it, put music on. The funniest thing was me that uh, we were trying to eat dinner and we couldn't eat dinner because all the Lego was on the table. So one would sit on the lounge, one would, two or three would sit on the bench and it wasn't really quite like a, like a group eat dinner. It was more like, I'm going to eat my dinner with my Lego and I'm going to build my Lego while I eat. It took me like three hours one night just to eat dinner because I just wanted to build my Lego. <laughs> good times, good times. Definitely was. What about you, Delphine? Uh, my favorite one. I mean, I, as a as a kid, Santa got me so many toys that I remember. Um, but the one that I still remember to this day was this set that was a, a pretend play of a cafeteria slash fast food serving thing. So you had this sort of table where you would have the little platter that you can, you know, move along and you had all these fake food items, burgers, hot dogs, an oven and all these things. (laughs) Did you (laughs) practice being the typical bad waitress? Like, uh, Gasson, I want my sweet one. She'd be like, I don't talk to you. (laughs) No, I didn't. I was a very good customer service officer. Thank you very much. (laughs) But that was really my favorite. Like, I remember getting it and just being you know so 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 happy to have this thing which i think was called i mean i always called it and my family always called it the dell burger now because my name is delphine i honestly don't know whether it was actually called dell burger and i think so <laughs> that it was the actual name <laughs> or whether it was called because i'm delphine and it was about burgers um Anyways, when I eventually you know, worked the at ladder McDonald's for 500, when I was in Steve. Australia, yeah. I remembered kindly on the Del Burger. <laughs> no. What about you, Dan? What about Carol's? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, I don't really have one. No. Oh. Uh, Boo. I didn't really do that much for it. So, growing up in different different situation. Anyway, um, what about Carol's, guys? Do you guys do the whole Carol's by candlelight Big thing no, or not Yanks. That's not true, Mike. We we do Darling Harbour, we've got the the Carols in the Domain and oh, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Australia um, definitely yeah. does it. So it's not an American tradition. We definitely have been doing this for a long time. Well, do you guys go watch the Carols? There's always every city's got Carols. Well, no, not really. Uh like my family, we weren't really big into well, for me specifically, I'm not really huge into carols. Like I'll, I love when it's on, like you know, listening to a carol here and there. Um, but I've been in, I went into having customer service for a fair few years, and I just got the whole Christmas album every single day, twenty four at ten hours a day when I was working, and you just got sick of it. But I always remember specifically on um, Prime Seven, it would be about. Eight, nine o'clock, they'd chuck on the Christmas carols. You'd have big singers like, I don't know, Guy Sebastian or the Wiggles or something like that for the little kids. And then, you know, sort of, they'd do that for a few hours. Uh, and that's what I used to do with mum and dad, but that we would just stay up for, like, with me and my two other siblings, we'd stay up for about two, three hours till about 10 o'clock. And then mum and dad would be like, all right, off to bed. So we'd all go to bed and then, you know, go to sleep. And then in the morning, we're like, I wonder what I get for Christmas. <laughs> Carols are not really big in France, that as far as I remember. Um, I, I've never been to Carols by Candlelight here in Australia. Um, but I do like, you know, Christmas songs and so on. But to me, a lot of the singing that I remember being younger was because we used to go to church. So on Christmas Eve, we'd be going to church. So then you sing a lo- lot of, you know, these songs in church anyways. Um, but I remember, you know, all the carols and the songs and so on, like people, you know, you have them in the shops and you listen to it, but Mm -hmm. I don't know that there was this huge culture of carols and and people singing, but it may be something that I've missed. But, um, now the last few years with that, um, we kind of sing some Polish Christmas songs, (laughs) which is really funny because I don't really understand and I don't speak Polish and I can barely read it because it is a, a different uh, alphabet if you want so um, like technically the alphabet is very similar but the, the sounds and so on and pronunciation is very different so you know I'd put some YouTube videos with subtitles and try to follow to my dad singing so that's kind of funny and I think it's nice for him 
I like it how you see the memes you'll see around of Michael Bublé emerges. Wait for you at Christmas, <laughs> Michael Bublé emerges from his cave. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I don't like to listen to any Christmas songs before the 1st of December. But usually I'll do my Christmas tree very early in December and then I'll definitely put some Christmas songs. But in the office, when it becomes a little bit too much, I have found that on Spotify, there's like a heavy metal Christmas songs playlist. And that has stopped people from playing too many Christmas songs. <laughs> ah, I like it. I like well, it uh, another tradition I used to do was um, every m- Christmas morning, you'd wake up, and as I got older and I liked Frank Sinatra, we would ha- we have a Frank Sinatra Christmas soundtrack, CD, whatever, album. And I'd always play that, and I'd slowly turn it up louder and louder to wake everybody up. And so-, so which is your favorite Christmas song then? Uh, well, Frank Sinatra... Uh, uh, oh, uh, good question. You'll have to sing it. You can't answer it without nah, singing let it. Let me just think. What's the fucking words? Um, sleigh bells in the snow. Uh, nah. what else? I like those J I N G L E bells. Uh, what else? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> what about you, Brendan? Um, uh, all the traditional stuff sort of was like just played so much that I just couldn't handle it and I sort of Merry just Christmas. stumbled across this like two years ago when I first moved to um, Bath as the first Christmas and uh, Sia actually brought out um, a Christmas album and I was sort of like a what? And I was like, no way, this couldn't be real. So I started listening and playing it and I was actually like all the songs are Christmas themed, but they're so totally different to what they're normally <laughs> that I actually really enjoyed it. And I'm like, this is my Christmas album. If you're going to play any album, it's this one. And I th- the one song I can't think, it's called Candy Cane Lane um, from Sierra on the Christmas album. And it's actually my favorite. Um, I d- can't think. Dun, 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 dun to Candy Cane Lane. Something like that. It's sort of like I can't sort of get the idea of the song in my head, but. That Sia album, sort of like, yeah, I love Christmas now. I found an album that I actually love and I'll actually listen to. But I never thought, you know, with the heavy metal playlists of them, I would find. But I suppose when I think about it, or maybe I wasn't looking hard enough. Are you sure that was a, it was yeah. Christmas? Because half sometimes it's like, Merry Christmas. And it's like, did he say something or is he just growling? Uh, you know. uh, no, no, no I, think he's just choking on the, I think he's just choking on the eggnog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too much eggnog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite one is a French one about mm. Santa coming to, t- that basically must be something like Santa coming to town. Um, but more recently, I really like Feliz Navidad. Oh, it's yeah. just such a fun song for Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> it's just uh, so fun. I don't know why. I love it. But otherwise, yeah, my favorite one is called Mon Petit Papa Noel. Feliz Navidad. Yeah, well, we do that um, before the grandmother passed away. She would just was, you know, from Peru and South America. Yeah. Uh, we would sing Feliz Navidad. And ah. mum would lead it. And, you know, you, uh, Granny would see into it, and then the rest of us kids would be like, Feliz Navidad, uh, blah, 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 <laughs> Feliz I don't know, Navidad, like blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 Feliz Navidad. So, yeah, so it was um, I really want to hear Delphin sing. Yeah, come on, Delphin. Uh, do you want to hear me do sing it, the do it, Petit do Papa it. Noel? Oui, oh, oui, <laughs> sing for, for us. <laughs> it's very simple. It goes like this. Petit Papa Noël, quand tu descendras du ciel. Uh, and then it Paris. continues, but I'll stop there. Oh, I thought you were going to keep going. You put the other two for Keep going. No, thank you. a song of your blend of your homeland. Maybe Mike and Brendan can take some lessons from you because they're terrible. I have a bad voice. Now that we're talking... About like favorite Chris like Christmas songs. What's your most hated Christmas song? Because I've already got mine in the bag, and like I would throw it away <laughs> if I could. Uh, ah, mine I is know. "All I Want for Christmas Is You." Oh, by is you? Carey. I mean, the Mariah Carey. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. I actually like it, but I like it once or twice, nope. and then it's like oh, no more. The worst part, it got number one on the charts this year. Yeah, apparently, why the fuck that? to the ground already. Why the fuck would that happen? <laughs> Have you seen the uh, Marilyn Manson uh, mashup with it? Yes, I saw it. that. It's so good. I love it. Makes it bearable. Yeah, it does. 
Oh, yeah, the old Love Actually movie every fucking Christmas. Ugh. That was a bit of a tradition. <laughs> Dad <laughs> likes that film, you know. I'm nope. oh, just going to watch a bit of Love Actually. And you're like, you what, mate? You what? So. And, you know, and, and a young Andrew Lincoln from The Walking Dead was a... Uh, one of the, the, the characters. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's right. Oh, is it the like, oh, one God. using this this panels? Yeah, 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 yeah. In love with Kira Knightley. So. Uh. He was aiming hard, and now he's got Michonne. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it's how he rolls. Well, before we drag on too long, any last traditions or fun facts? Anything that you've got to throw in? I mean, there are certain years where I'm more excited for like Star Wars being around Christmas than actual Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and this yeah. year, you oh, know. Yeah, you know. the old Boxing Day releases. It's going to be that. It's like, yeah, Star Wars and Christmas around the same time. Perfect. End of the year. I think Star Wars actually comes out like in two days in cinemas, not actually Boxing Day like they have done the past two times. Yeah, it's always a little bit. Like the last couple of times, it's always been... Um, Around the nineteenth or twentieth, yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so it was Boxing Day because I always went to see them on Boxing Day. No. Nah. Oh, that was number seven. I, I only literally nah, just I've, watched them I've eight seen the other day. I've seen both seven and eight at a midnight release on a Wednesday night. That um, was well before Christmas. Yeah. yeah okay. The week I, before. I only just watched eight like two weeks ago. So. What? Oh my gosh. What I. Unfriend. <laughs> Band for life. To to, I still haven't watched what it is that that other movie you're talking about the other night. It was like Sixth Sense or something. I still haven't watched that yet. What? Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Kids these yeah. days. So Dan, hey, I'm, Dan I'm, and Brennan, are you going to go see the movie on Boxing Day? If Dan will hold my hand. I'll always hold your hand, buddy. <laughs> hey, you said that about me, man. You said that about me. <laughs> no. Only in the horror like, films. I feel like for a Christmas thing, I might. I've got, I've got a, I've got a video game to play and stream on on Boxing it's a, Day. It's so. a, it's a good game. I hope you enjoy it. I yeah, loved so. it. I'll um, probably play a little bit before. I might stream a little bit before, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. You might say it. You might not. I might just play it and just do a lot after leveling up, like ten levels, and figuring out the game. Yes. All right. Well, we might call it there. Thank you guys for being on this episode. Hopefully everyone is joining us on Christmas Day listening to this. Do you guys have a message to say to everyone as uh, they listen? Joyous Noel. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Have a have a good day. Spend it with your family. Feliz with Navidad. Them. Feliz Spend Navidad. Spend it with people that truly care. And, you know, if that's going to be just by yourself, then, you know, make the most of it. Because Christmas isn't... And don't spend it with Mike. That's right. Yeah. You might yeah, even don't, find don't, some don't random do dogs walking around or a cat or a, <laughs> an old lady just randomly walking the street. I don't know. Some kids from next door. Who knows? You just know, uh, bring kids in the don't candy. drink too much yeah. and uh, hang out at the <laughs> let's skate park drunk and passed out on Christmas Day. Don't want that to know from your family. <laughs> trust me. Mm. Or go for a bushwalk or something like that, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for being on this episode and thank you to everyone who's been listening to this. This has been a very special episode of The Soap, our Christmas special. We wish you a Merry Christmas and we hope you're enjoying the day or if you're listening to it after, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. And uh, if you don't hear it... All I want for Christmas is you. (laughs) And cut, (laughs) cut, cut, cut. (laughs) Cut, 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 cut. You cut, you cut, you cut, you cut. Giggity, 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 goo. Giggity, goo. <laughs> you have been listening to the Soap Podcast. Join us again soon for another episode, and don't forget to hit us up on all the social media platforms because we love hearing from you. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.